Hi everybody, so this stuff we've been working on and fluorescence and solar, it's kind of exciting but it kind of smacks off evil plan to dominate the world, doesn't it? Do you expect me to talk? No, Mr. Bond, I expect you to die. Just got that sense about it, doesn't it? So anyway, solar tracking. Everybody knows solar tracking improves the output by about 20%. Unfortunately, it also increases the cost by about 20%. So the net effect is zero. It's useful in certain circumstances. So the tracking actually is a bit more complicated. So I'll do a separate video and, and link at the end of this video just about solar tracking. For now, let's take it as read that that's the case. Okay, so here's our ground, here's our solar panel and morning, afternoon, evening. Now in the afternoon, the sun's rays come straight down hit that panel and are at their peak efficiency. In the morning, they come that direction and basically you get zip. There's a huge energy reduction. The output of the panel drops through the boots when the rays hit it that way. Okay, that's a problem. Main thing people do is tilt the panel and then follow the sun with the tilted panel and that's what solar tracking is all about. But as we were doing this fluorescent stuff, it occurred to me, what about if you put just a prism on that? If we put a prism on there, then these rays coming in will be reflected straight down. Equally, if they're coming in from there, they're going to reflect straight down. And if they're coming straight from above in the noon, then no issues at all. So what about sticking a few prisms across the surface of your panel? You'd get an improvement, wouldn't you? So to my mind, that's sort of like a tracking system, isn't it? I mean, it's like a tracking system without any mechanical components. All you've got to do is stick a load of prisms on there and, hey presto, you can get those rays from the sun. And of course, there's bound to be something wrong with that because who wouldn't have thought of something as simple as that? And there is something wrong with it. Turns out that if you stick anything on top of a solar cell, including a lump of glass, it'll absorb some of the light. And when it absorbs some of the light, of course, the electricity generation goes down. And the difference in cost is so much that it doesn't really make it worthwhile. However, while we were working on this fluorescence idea, I noticed something. What I noticed was this stuff fluoresces. I mean, wow, hey, genius or what? But I also noticed something else. When you put it on top of some uh, solar cell, that fluorescence offset the amount of light that was being absorbed by the jelly. Now you can check whether I'm talking BS or not really easily. Two main ways. One, go to the pound store and buy yourself a highlighter and some jello and knock yourself out giving it a quick test to see if I'm talking BS. The other is jump onto Google Scholar and have a look at the research where you'll find lots of people have been trying fluorescence and getting some great results. But the idea Let's make some triangles out of a fluorescent material, stick them on top of a solar cell and see if that solar tracking will work. Because certainly we get a much improved input when the light comes in and we have a triangle on top. What shape does that lump of material have to be? I mean, we tried a 90 degree triangle, eh? And it worked pretty well, but the sun's moving. And it may well be that's not the best shape. I don't know, maybe a sawtooth, maybe a triangle, maybe a prism like that, maybe a rounded prism. No idea. But that's the thing to be investigating, to see if we can actually get that to happen. So how would it work in solar tracking is my plan, because I think that that, well, that could be enormous. I mean, obviously... We wouldn't put jello on top of it. I mean, we've got things like, you know, drying out rot, insects, all that sort of stuff. But experimenting with this kind of stuff can end up costing you thousands of dollars. So finding a medium where you can experiment with it, and yet it's only going to cost you pence and mostly the effort, I think is huge, actually. And of course, jello with um, highlighter pen in it isn't the best material. There are better materials out there that we, uh, we could be looking at. But we don't need to look at those first. We can do all of that experimentation using jello and highlighters to find out if we're talking BS or not. And that's what I was thinking about. That's my plan for world domination. Of course, the fatal flaw in that plan is I've just shared it with everybody. But I'm okay with that. I think things like this should be public domain. I think the things that we should be working on. And that's the direction I was thinking of. If that works, of course, 
we've done something worthwhile. So hopefully it excites you guys as much as it excited me and hopefully a few of you guys will pitch in there and give this one a go and see if we can actually work it out. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching and please do remember to like and subscribe.